Okay, welcome. Today, uh, if you've come here looking for a WordPress aficionado to create your website for you, uh, you may be looking at the wrong video because today we're looking at the back end. How are we going to administrate a WordPress site and how can we maintain what is a development version where we take risks, uh, we do our updates, uh, we make sure that our um, environment is the best performing and the most secure, and the production, which is the result of that. So what I'm going to do in this particular instance is show you the WordPress command line interface, which is a utility that uh, is available for most operating systems, given that it runs uh, uh, under PHP. And we will use it to instantiate a WordPress instance, configure a WordPress instance, and deploy that instance to a production environment. Today we're going to look at a production environment being shared hosting and the restrictions that that brings from time to time. We are looking at the screen at the moment and what's happening is the um, the command that I've issued is please download me a copy of the WordPress command line interface. And there's a hundred or so uh, modules that are being downloaded that depend uh, uh, or, or are the, the CLI's dependencies. And you can see things like Symfony, um, even extensions of Composer itself. And this um, will go into our system directory, uh, our local system directory, um, and be supporting the functions of the WPCLI to make sure it can do things like download, uh, it can do things like check the network. So the, the next step um, is to provide uh, easy access to that WPCLI. And it's hidden, at least on my Linux system, deep in Composer's own uh, structure. So Composer has a, a place to live for its configurations, but also for many of its componentry that we want to use globally. Um, so now I know that the WordPress uh, command line exists, and without any parameters, it's going to produce a large help doc. One of the commands that you can do is, is type uh, wp space help, and that will give us a, um, a listing of more detailed information. If you say wp space help space core, it'll give you uh, extra information about how this WordPress instance, or sorry, this CLI is going to do what it does. This stage here is to just demonstrate the fact that my Fedora um, Core 31 operating system has the WP CLI built into its own package manager. So your parent operating system, whether you have got a um, package manager running in OS 10 or you've got one in Windows, aka the Windows Store, you might find in there that you can download and install that WP CLI. Um, my advice is probably to install Composer first and get Composer to install it. Just given that Composer is the package manager for PHP language and it um, will probably have the latest versions, which opens up a bit of a quandary in, in some people's minds. And that is, why don't you just use Composer to get a copy of WordPress? You can do that. It is possible. Um, but in this instance, I want to explore the WP CLI a little bit more carefully. And uh, I'll, I'll do that by providing a demonstration of a life cycle. That is the creation of the WordPress instance, which I've just downloaded from, uh, from the network using the WP CLI of all things, WP core download. Now this is an unconfigured instance of WordPress um, and it needs a database and it needs a password to access that database. So we 
need to make sure that there is a, a, a friendly environment. So your environment, if it doesn't have uh, MySQL or MariaDB installed, you need to install it. And you can uh, write um, the necessary commands to interact with it, or you can use phpMyAdmin or some other GUI. The intention, at least in this investigation, is, is to try to do everything in the command line. The reason for that? So that we can write scripts. Uh, we can write deployment scripts, we can write instantiation scripts, or we can write update scripts. Those scripts give us the opportunity for automation in um, timed events, um, so that maybe every month we can run a process that will upgrade our WordPress to the latest version. Uh, even do backups, for example. You can get the WP uh, command line utility to export all of the posts, all of the pages, um, all of the media, um, and save that to a, a zip file so that you're, you're not um, changing the core or your customizations. They don't change very often, but it's what users do on the system that you do want to save. And something like the WPCLI can save you a lot of the heavy lifting and a lot of the manual labor um, such that you can do backups on a monthly or a weekly or a daily basis to extract out only the things that have changed between when you deployed it onto the, uh, onto the internet. So I'm pulling the username and password out of the database that I created. So um, normally the modus operandi is to create a user for every database that you create. Um, you don't generally give the root account to, um, to your PHP scripts um, because they might get stolen, they might get uh, taken. So it, it's an, uh, a good idea or a good practice to, um, to separate this. Bear in mind that this is my dev environment, so I can be a little bit more candid about the use of passwords or, or even maybe even the root account. So um, not extremely worried, but when we go to production, we'll look at cPanel. And what cPanel will give us is a, uh, a way to uh, generate secure passwords. Um, and uh, we just copy those into, uh, into our scripts as, as we need them. So I'm going through the installation process now. So I've, I've created my database. I've downloaded my WordPress instance. And, and this is the command line equivalent of opening up your web browser and going localhost slash WordPress. Um, but instead, I'm inserting the name of the site, the URL of the site, the admin user of the site, and the system is going to generate a password for me. Uh, this idea comes from, again, the process of automation. Um, if you're automating an installation of WordPress, you want the system to generate a password, and then you can go back through the logs uh, you might have had the logs emailed to you, or the logs might exist in a in a separate part of your system. Uh, you can look at those and identify uh, what the instance password is um, based on the historical activity that took place. And you can see here that once I run this, it tells me what the admin password is generated as, and it's probably about 16 or 18 characters. It's not human memorizable, um, so it's it's something that you're probably going to have to store away um, in a in a in a password keep or something, just so that uh, you um, don't lose it. Um, and this is probably the major problem with passwords: is once a password is stored, then uh, it can be stolen. Um, there are features of of implementing two-factor auth with um, uh, authenticator apps on your phone. Um, those are plugins that you can d uh, download and, and install and, and you know harden up your environment a little bit. Um, so uh, again, looking at the WP um, features, so we can look at the version number. We could probably even look at the way in which our system is configured um, and uh, uh, this has the uh, advantage of, of again, um, putting in a script and, and running at, at predetermined times, pre-upgrade, post-upgrade. 
one new feature and pretty much all of the open source content management systems and, and uh, server-side frameworks have uh, the ability for you to run a standalone server and, and WordPress is no different. I'm not uh, putting it in my htdocs folder, I'm not dropping it into um, a www folder, all I'm doing in situ is running the WP CLI to uh, instantiate its standalone environment. It's not recommended that you run um, this uh, PHP server in production because there's no logging, um, there's no security, uh, there's no uh, ability to scale uh, this environment. So it's just for dev only. Uh, so as I mentioned at the beginning of this video, I'm not extremely interested in showing you how to uh, use the admin panel in WordPress. There's plenty of other videos that can do that for you. Um, what's different is that the WP CLI allows us to install and enable uh, plugins uh, of all sort. So I'm going to download um, a couple of plugins uh, and a theme uh, but instead of using um, the explore themes or explore plugins pages that exist in the WP admin um, uh, control panel, um, the WP CLI will allow us to um, uh, download and activate different plugins. So you can see here I've, I've installed the Gutenberg plugin. Now the, um, the, the people who are aware of WordPress 5 um, they know that Project Gutenberg has been integrated. Uh, this plugin, in its unactivated state, um, takes over the create page and create post and gives you a full screen editing experience, which I like. I, I really enjoy the way the theme editor works in WordPress, and I wanted the same for my content editing. So the the idea, again, is is that um, what I could do is is um, develop a script that just instantiates a version of WordPress for me with all of my favorite plugins configured in the way I like um, with the press of a button. Uh, and uh, those that use uh, the cloud and Docker would appreciate um, the WP CLI for, for just digging directly into the WP core and being able to... Um, uh, make system-wide changes without uh, actually having to touch the uh, um, the user interface. There are ways of of running um, the uh, the GUI uh, in script. Uh, I've been playing with a, a, a system called Puppeteer, which allows us to run a headless version of Chrome. And if if need be, you could um, you could automate uh, a, a recording of the things that you did with the UI. But as long as you have the WP CLI, it makes things a little bit easier for you to um, to at least get your um, your WordPress instance to the state that uh, you can then develop content. You can then start working in, in the GUI environment. And those people that create pipelines of WordPress so that designers and copywriters can all collaborate um, would appreciate WP Admin's ability to get it to a stage of containing all of the necessary um, uh, configurations that they're uh, standard installations have and the clear advantage of using this is that we are going to pull the latest version of WordPress and uh, the latest instance of each one of the plugins if you're using something like git um, you end up freeze drying your WordPress instance to uh, you know a version that uh, you might have dealt with last year so it's nice to be able to interactively pull from uh, the official repositories, um, the official uh, current versions of WordPress, and the official current versions of every plugin that um, that is available, um, and the the goal, at least from administration ex uh, um, expectations, is that every WordPress instance that you have in production is exactly the same version. Every instance of WordPress that you have has exactly the same version and combination of plugins. I note also that um, 
this WordPress CLI does support multi-site installations where you have one uh, core code base and multiple instances of WordPress running underneath. Um, I've not personally gone there, but it would be uh, an adventure in um, creating or spawning off extra sites from one code base, from one place. Um, the Some of the minutiae around setting up subdomains um, and setting up uh, the other parts of, of uh, the way the network infrastructure needs to be set up is, is another story altogether uh, outside the remit of WPCLI and, of course, this video. So all of the domains that I'm using here I've pre-set up um, and I haven't used a, a command line utility to you know reserve a domain. I haven't used a command line utility to... Um, create uh, DNS zones. Uh, that is certainly something that's possible uh, and you can see it in the cloud environments quite often that um, a, uh, a URL will be given to you when you instantiate instances of WordPress on the cloud itself. So we're getting to the point now we're dealing with themes and I'm again looking for a theme that is compatible with Gutenberg. Gutenberg is the um, the default editor for WordPress version 5 onwards um, and it's good to look for themes that are broadly compatible with Gutenberg um, unless of course you're using a, a different theme editor and a different theme system. Um, in fact I note that in the top 10 list of most popular plugins at the moment the uh, Disable Gutenberg plugin is is, um, is right there in, in uh, happy consequence with many of the other functional um, plugins that we, we, we can see. So there's a lot of uh, Luddites out there that aren't super excited by Gutenberg. I personally am, and, and I think the next uh, production site that I build using WordPress will, will use Gutenberg quite heavily. I'm just struggling here with the uh, concept of making the theme active. Um, and you can look at um, the help and that's what I've done here is I've, I've asked for the WP to tell me what is available here for um, theme control. So, um, and it is possible for you to inject uh, pure PHP into this. I've noticed that if you wanted to, let's say, delete a bunch of posts that were older than 10 years or older than four years, um, you can do that with the WP um, a command line utility, but you end up using some PHP code to incorporate that that kind of a search. So um, it does allow you a certain flexibility as an admin to you know junk off things that might be a little bit old in your WordPress site and and not not relevant to um, what's going on. You may have a draft destroyer uh, script, uh, or you might have a um, a way in which you can you can do just back up um, only uh, um, pages that were uh, created in the last week. So you end up with um, backups that are just um, incremental in form. So I'm just confirming in my mind that that plugin and that theme got installed correctly. Um, and I did have a play with posts. I, I did, um, I, I synthesized a bunch of, of dummy posts. You could see that in the last screen there. Um, now, one thing, as I pointed out, your scripts could be instantiating a site or the scripts could be upgrading the site or keeping the, the core at its current um, stable release or all of the plugins at their current stable release. This is a big risk, and it's something that I have problems with, with um, you know programs like Soft Delicious that exist in, in the uh, cPanel um, universe, where you can press a button to upgrade your WordPress. I, I get very concerned at that because um, they might break the way in which your site works. So the idea of doing an update of the core or update of the modules is very quick and very easy with the WPCLI because you can just use the all flag to just go through and, and, and upgrade everything. But as a result of that, you probably need to go and check that things are still working properly. 
there was a, another uh, issue that needed to be dealt with. When you update the core, sometimes the core has demanded uh, a script to do updates to your uh, database. So make sure when you do uh, or you've successfully done an update of the core that you also do an update of the database because the schema might have changed in some way, shape or form. I'm pretty sure when you update the plugins, the schema changes will, will happen automatically, but uh, don't quote me on that. So um, you can see here that I've got uh, two extra plugins um, and one extra theme that has been installed. Now we move to the part of the video where we need to deploy this. So let's make an assumption that I've created all of the posts, all of the pages, I've styled all of the blocks, all of the widgets are in place. Um, now I'm, I want to push that up to the server. Now, uh, the kludgy way of doing it in my mind is to create two versions of your um, of your um, WordPress uh, config file, wp-config.php. I've seen instances where people have built multiple um, if statements inside one wp-config so that if wp-config recognizes itself on this domain, then use this configuration. If it recognizes itself on that domain, use that configuration. That's a, a, a very... Um, a beautiful way of dealing with one WordPress file on many different um, origins or many different different uh, different places. I'm not super happy with it because I think it can be it can be tricked, um, but uh, you know otherwise it, it works in 99% of cases. But I've gone with the idea of creating two WP files, one for prod and one for dev. And what I'm doing here inside. Um, cPanel is just generating the new uh, users, the new database, the new passwords that are necessary for um, this WP uh, uh, config pro a PHP file to, to access the, the real server. So um, I then have two sets of files. I've got one file for my dev and one file for my production. And I'd need to copy the dev and the production to the um, WP config file so that it became active, so that it became the, the active WP config. And that's just another sort of copy command that would need to happen in our script if we were flipping from production to dev or we were flipping from dev to production. There would be a, an, another one that said copy this file to there so that it becomes production. Um, I'm just finalizing the creation of the database, which will be completely empty in this case. And that's a one-off thing. I think once the database is there, um, it may be advantageous for you to do uh, a database dump that drops tables so that you end up with the entire database being recreated from scratch. Um, I don't think I did that flag when I dumped this particular database, but it would be, again be something that I'd put in the script when I was uh, pushing to production so that if the database that exists on the server um, is populated, I would unpopulate it and repopulate it with what was in dev. So at some point, dev and production have to be equal. They have to be exactly the same. Um, so there, there needs to be a two-way conversation. You push your dev up to production, but you also need to take the changes that happened in production back down to dev so that you can um, affect all of the upgrades or modifications or um, security patches that you deemed necessary to make sure that WordPress is still going. And again, a multi-site instance of WordPress makes a lot of sense um, if you're maintaining uh, one site for, for multiple customers. And again, that's a, that's a, a road that's worth going down if, if you have more than you know, a dozen clients. Um, you can keep one instance of WordPress maintained for all of them. However, I wouldn't recommend it if, let's say, one has decided to use WooCommerce and the other hasn't. Um, it may be more sort of deleterious for you to maintain a WooCommerce multi-site as opposed to, let's say, a pure blogging or, or pure sort of design. 
So I'm going to the domain that I want to put that site onto and currently it gives me the 404 not found. So in the file manager, I'm going to need to create. Now, I've diverged a couple of times now from the default operandus of, excuse me, using the command line. But the um, the command line could be used here, but I see though these actions here as one-off actions. They they just need to, to be set up for the environment itself. Um, and when I refresh now, I see a directory listing, which again, for a production site, is not, not a great idea. We shouldn't see directory listings. That's again um, a... Um, cPanel default. It's something that should be turned off in the with the with the cPanel administrator. So um, you can uh, the the last things I'm going to do before zipping this side up and pushing it up to the network is is to flush out any cache data. Um, so there's a, a mod rewrite that uh, WordPress depends on so that friendly URLs are created when you create a blog or a post. And flushing that, um, that rewrite cache is, is super important before and after. Um, I found that if you're moving from domain A to domain B, um, that, um, that caching uh, is going to be a, a bit of a problem. And it's the case with most uh, content management systems or even low-level frameworks. They end up having a caching system built in, and that caching system needs to be flushed whenever you do something quite, um, when you do a transplant like this. So this is my shared hosting provider, uh, and in there, I wanted to confirm that I have SSH access because I don't want to have to open up cPanel every time I've got a new dev that I want to push out to production. I want a script in my dev to push up the database, push up the uh, WordPress files, push up uh, the media site folder so that um, it can be unzipped remotely. So what I'm doing here is I'm just compressing uh, a dump of the database, um, even the, the admin password, which probably shouldn't be there, um, and then running a command that will send that file up to my hosting provider. Now, my hosting provider has done two things to protect, well, three actually. The first is they're running the SSH server on a high port, 2683. The second is they require me to generate a key. And the fourth is they need to know what IP address I'm coming from. And that's why I looked at the um, the hosting control panel to confirm that I was, was getting that right. So um, they're really zealously protecting the shell, the remote shell, because obviously anyone who gets access can do quite a lot of damage by uploading their own scripts and executing them and doing all kinds of, of, of shenanigans. Um, as, as I found out with this particular hosting provider, there's a number of things I can't do. I really wanted to be able to, um, to RSH or remote shell uh, execute um, and that's not available. I also wanted to rsync. I wanted to be able to synchronize the files on my local file system with the files on the remote, which is a two-way commit. It's a, if there's any files up on the remote system, I could then bring them down to the, the local. If there's any updates or changes on local, they could go up to remote. And that checks file size and file date, um, uh, update date. Um, but again, my hosting provider doesn't have it, so I have to be a bit more rudimentary and, and probably a, a bit more heavy-handed. Uh, I'd have to you know, completely delete the um, WP folder and recreate it with, what, with whatever was in dev um, and protect the posts and the pages uh, and the comments that um, were created by users. Um, those can be managed separately from the themes and the plugins. And, and to my mind, when you're doing a, a, um, a management of a site, the web developer and the system administrator are both um, responsible for uh, everything except for the content um, because you're hoping to give to the customer the responsibility of maintaining their own content. 
Now I've gone and SSH'd or secure shelled onto my uh, hosting provider. So instead of using cPanel, I'm using the cPanel command line. And I've gone to the public HTML and unzipped what I needed to unzip. The next thing I want to do is instantiate the database, or sorry, at least um, get the tables of the database instantiated. The database has been created, and I could only do that in cPanel. Uh, there's no ability for me to use the CLI to generate, because I need escalated privileges. And you can think of cPanel as a way of, of having control over the escalated privileges of users. Um, so I'm stuffing up because what I want to do is I want to pipe back the uh, WPSQL uh, file into um, into that uh, Lucius My WordPress uh, database. So I'm pasting the password that we got given from cPanel and it says all is done, all is well, but I don't trust it. Um, especially when you're doing this in lieu of writing a script, you want to make sure that the script works. Uh, you want to make sure that you're not, you know, destroying too much. So the idea is is probably to to do this manually and then copy down each one of the commands that you've done, so that you have um, a uh, an ability to to run this this particular process over and over. Now I've confirmed in my mind because I just didn't trust um, the um, the command line utility. Um, to, to say what it needed to say. I should also down uh, destroy the mywp.zip file. That's the zip file that contained all of the files, including a dump of the database. Um, so I'm just going to go back to my web browser and type in the URL of the WordPress instance that's there and uh, visit it properly. Now, let's assume that this is the site that people have used for a little while and uh, there's a, a major security um, a patch that needs to happen on this site. Um, what I, I need to do is, is export all of the um, posts, all of the pages, all of the uh, comments, um, and copy them back to my local instance so that I've got all of those changes. Notable exceptions to that will be things like menus, which are sort of a theme orientated. Uh, any um, uh, plugin specific data that's generated. So if you've got, let's say, uh, WP forms running, remembering all of the forms that were created, um, uh, that won't be exported. So you'll, you'll need to find a, a potentially another way. Another way might be to, um, let's say, pull back your site holus bolus and then do the upgrades on it using the WP CLI. Um, your processes might change. My desire is to try to automate this as much as possible. Um, the idea of a developer or, or you know, a, a person who wants to inhabit maybe the DevOps areas of, of the industry would be very interested in systematizing processes that um, allow us to shunt uh, interactive elements from hosting provider to hosting provider or from dev to staging to staging to production and actually have a, a, a proper um, continuous integration, continuous delivery ideal. Um, so what we're looking at here is a way in which we can um, export all that data. Now it exports to an XML file which immediately to my mind creates a concern because uh, things, binary data like our media uh, might not get, get uh, copied across. So I've uh, again flushed my cache and I've actually used the command WP site empty. And that's a rather powerful command because what that does is it kills everything, every post, every page, every comment, um, and, and absolutely obliterates it. So, you know, use that one with caution. Um, so the, the, the final um, link in the chain is to use this WPCLI to populate uh, back in everything that happened in production for a little while. And here I'm looking for the um, command that will allow us to import. So I'm having a quick look at what it is that I need to have. So I, I need to import a file. So what was the file? The file that I downloaded from production. 
And it's telling me something about, well, you're going to need to make sure you, you include some extra parameters. Um, and uh, sometimes your production might have different users. Sometimes your production might have, um, you know, different, uh, different posters. And that, that can be a problem because, again, that export doesn't copy users um, so again, this process is not complete. You you have to look at ways in which you can manage the backups properly. Now, uh, we're finally getting on to the last couple of seconds that I have with you. This has been a work in progress for me, and I think it still needs refining, but it gives you an idea for how you might be able to up your game with regards to system administrating WordPress. So I thank you all for your listening and we'll catch you later.